This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The last time I fought Gastem at my 150 gram horizontal spinner, uh, it broke. So today I want to try and build it indestructible. This is a very tall order, and look, we're not going to get an indestructible robot, but we'll try and get something very close to it. The biggest thing I want to do is to move the weapon off the motor so that the motor is going to survive hits like the one that entirely destroyed the last version of Guestimate. Because once Guestimate doesn't have a weapon, it is a sitting duck in the arena and that is never a Just good a place bit, yeah. to be. While we're moving those two things apart, we might as well double support the weapon itself just to make sure that bending moments don't affect how the weapon is spinning. And that means we need two very strong but also lightweight plates to hold everything in place. And that's where PCB way comes in. If you have been around the channel for a little while, you probably saw this coming. PCB way have supplied some PCBs. These are a custom set of PCBs, which I have designed to actually use as the front end of the new guesstimate just in its entirety. They have everything we need. They have mounting points to connect to the chassis. They have a mount for the brushless motor. They also have a hole in the chassis to allow the wire is for the brushless motor to kind of dip below the level of the PCB, which is important for the brushless motors I'm going to be using. And then they also have the bolt hole at the front, which is going to run the actual weapon and plenty of fiberglass around it to be sure that the thing doesn't break, or at least to hope that the thing doesn't break. But this is not all the PCB we have supplied. In my last video on Gestima, I said I wanted to be able to deal with TPU opponents, people who just bounce off you when you hit them with a flat tooth. And PCB Way have come to the party and provided a whole bunch of weapons. There are two of each type of weapon here. These are CNC milled out of S7 tool steel, so they should be pretty hard. And I have two different variants. I have the variant on this side, which have a nice chamfer on them, coming to a very, very sharp point. This is not knife sharp by any means, but it is a ton sharper than anything I've ever run in a robot before, and I didn't want knife sharp, because knife sharp is going to blunt very quickly. These should hold their edge reasonably well, and they don't need to be that sharp to get into the layer lines of a TPU print. But these are very long and very thin, which I wanted them to be to get the maximum damage out of them, but though it's not going to do very well against a vertical spinner. So I also have these two weapons which are a little bit shorter, a little bit beefier, don't have the chamfer on them. The whole point of these is to survive vertical spinner hits and be able to dish back some punishment as well. Also milled out of S7 tool steel. These are some very, very cool weapons and oh, I just, I love being able to design tiny little holes in things and they come out perfectly. I'm very excited to hit many, many robots with these. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be really, really cool. These all together are a little bit heavy, so the design of this robot has had to shrink in scale quite a lot to try and fit everything in that we want to actually get the robot working. Speaking of the chassis, Look, this is an ant weight. It is a 3D printed chassis. However, I have done things slightly differently this time. Normally I would do my chassis out of ABS because it is incredibly lightweight. And up until fairly recently, it has been strong enough to survive in the ant weight class. Uh, that's just not quite good enough at this point in time. So I am taking a, if you can't beat them, join them approach to this build and we are going with a TPU chassis, but not just regular 95A TPU. I have found some 64D TPU, which is a harder material. So it should like survive hits a little bit better. It should also give a bit of structure into the chassis. Now, as mentioned, our PCBs have some holes to mount these PCBs into the chassis. That means I need threads inside the TPU. Now I could 
print those into the TPU and that would hold fairly well, but on a really good vertical shot, there's going to be a lot of force on those. So I wanted to do something a little bit different, which is why we actually stopped the print partway through and insert some nylon spaces in there. I'm not particularly sure if these nylon spaces slash nuts are going to be stronger than the TPU, but I just figured that a like machined, I would assume, uh, thread is going to do a little bit better than a printed thread in the plastic. And I also wanted to try out this technique of pausing the machine partway through and dropping in some extra components. I did struggle to get the fourth one in, I think because of the print orientation of this specific print. I will maybe, if I've got time, do a second chassis that I print in a different orientation, hopefully to just kind of like avoid whatever is in the hole that the fourth uh, spacer is supposed to go into and just kind of get that to clear up and work a little bit better. Oh, that is bouncy. Uh, that is really a good sign. It does have a little bit of flex to it. It feels quite good, I think, as a chassis. And it's, uh, look, with that and these, we're almost at 50 grams all told, which is a lot for chassis components for a robot, especially when these bars are about 20 grams. So all told, that's 70 grams. That's like half the weight of the robot gone already, and we haven't put any electronics into this thing at all yet, nor do we have any of the mounting hardware, like all of the bolts and screws and things that are going to definitely weigh this down some. Uh, look, it's gonna get tight on weight, I think. So we're probably gonna have to go with some of my lightning tricks that I've used in the past. So let's get the electronics together. The main bits of our electronics are these. So I have two brushless motors here and two N10s. These are 1650 N10s, I believe. So this robot should be pretty fast, which is gonna be cool. I'm pretty keen for that. These are a 2004 brushless motor. So they're a little bit thinner than I would normally be running, but also have a bigger can on them. They're also running a little slow. So we're actually going to have the output speed up rather than slow down off this motor. It should have plenty of torque to do what we need. So I wanna get more speed out of it. The only problem I have with these right now is this tiny little shaft that is sticking out the top here. That is sticking up two millimeters. That is the entire clearance between this motor and the spinning bar. So obviously that needs to go. So to do that, we need to prep the patients for surgery. I'm literally just gonna tape these up entirely and then we're going to Dremel that little top section off. There we go, much better. There is basically nothing there. Tiny little like nib at the top, but that is fine. That is going to give us the clearance we need to run the weapon on this thing. So next up is gears. Here we go. This is the one going on the motor and this is the one that is going to bolt into the weapon and also sit over our bolt that runs as the shaft for everything. Uh, so these guys need to go press fit over here, but also we are going to epoxy them in place. To put the gears on, I scuffed up the outside of the motors and then very, very carefully applied epoxy to the outside before pushing them into the gear. I did it this way just so that the squeeze out was less likely to run into anything kind of important and jam up the whole motor. It's always just a little bit nerve wracking gluing something to a brushless motor that you need to have move uh, at the end of it. Thankfully though, these ones came out pretty well. They all still spin and work. You can also see I've now put uh, cables or plugs on the back of them so we can actually get the whole robot built. We have basically everything we need. The electronics here is just a Lumforge ant board uh, with the end ends I mentioned earlier a plug to attach an ESC to, which is down here, and a screw switch, which is a very lightweight power distribution setup that I've had in the past. So we can hopefully get this whole thing bolted together. This being my first time building this robot, I started the wrong way. I put the base PCB on first, 
but it gets in the way of other screws going in later. So I actually had to undo this, but I put it in thinking that I would put on the weapon first, which meant adding the bearings and also the weapon bar into the gear for the weapon itself. And then I put that onto the robot, but of course it just immediately fell off because there was no way to retain it. Then I started putting in the motors and realized I could not get in the screws for the motors. So I had to take the bottom PCB off and put in the screws for the motors to keep everything in place. Then it took a while to pack all of the electronics. It is quite tight in the robot. There is not a lot of space. So it takes a little bit of fiddling to get all the wiring down into where it needs to be. Once that's done, we can attach the brushless motor to the top plate and put the top plate in then we can actually finally put the bottom plate in along with the weapon as well. So here we are without currently a top plate or wheels and we're getting really close to the line. Two grams left according to my scales, which is not a good place to be. There's definitely some things I could do to lighten down. I can lighten the motor mounts a little bit. I can probably uh, lighten some of the like gearing and things like maybe this front gear could be lightened a little bit. I've got some super lightweight wheels to put on, but I think even with those, we're gonna end up a little bit overweight and yeah. I, I think for now, I'm just gonna charge ahead. I will worry about the weight problem later. That is definitely something I can deal with uh, after I've got the robot tested and working. So I did what I do when I'm up against a weight limit. I changed my lid over to being a very, very thin piece of milk jug HDPE. This and changing some bolts around made it so that the robot didn't actually go up weight adding the lid. However, I then put the wheels on and unfortunately we are currently at 153 grams. So three grams overweight. There is a little bit I can probably do just in tweaking print settings on the chassis potentially to bring that weight back down again get the whole robot underweight, I think it is possible to do. However, I need to get this video up. So we are just going to jump straight into a spin-up test and try and hit something with this and see how it goes, basically. All right. Whoa, that's Yes, that, this worked very, very well. First of all, drive, great. It went really quickly when I was barely throttling the stick around. In my tiny test box, it's almost too fast, uh, but that's gonna be great in the actual arena. I'm going to be able to be wherever I wanna be. Uh, as long as I can drive well, I should be able to get around my opponents and stuff. That was good, I like that a lot. Uh, then the gear setup, it worked pretty well. The gears themselves don't seem to have any wear on them. The teeth, both on the weapon blade and on the gear setup, look totally fine. There was a little bit of a stutter in the weapon sometimes. If I throttled it up too slowly, it could catch and not spin up correctly. But if I just put it all the way to 100%, it spun up, no problems. There's a little bit of sound, I think, out of the plastic gears. But other than that, it went very, very well. Now, the, we have to talk about the hits because this is exactly what I wanted out of this. Normally, with my regular weapon teeth, the ones that are just square, if I hit something with a horizontal, it bounces, it pinballs around the arena. And this test chassis is 150 grams of PLA. Hitting it is like hitting another ant weight. And yet, when the new version of Guestimate hit that with these new sharp teeth, it did not move. Instead, it cut and it cut very, 
very well. There is an entire gap in here, the depth that Guestimate's blade can go, and it's just all gone. All the PLA in there is absolutely gone. That was awesome. And again, we did not bounce because the energy transfer was into ripping the material in half, meaning there wasn't that kinetic force pushing the two things apart, and Guestimate stayed right there, continuing to hit, continuing to cut and rip away, and doing a considerable amount of damage. That's beautiful, that's exactly why uh, I designed these new blades, and exactly what I was hoping to achieve out of them. Yes, the robot is three grams overweight still, I will find that weight, I have to, because I really, really want to compete with this thing as it currently stands. It's going to be scary for my opponents, hopefully. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.